Everybody, Scott Smith, H. Joe for Life, um, FSRD, Fuel Systems Research and Development. All right, so got some good news. Um, I have most of the parts that I need now for the new design. I don't have quite all of them, but I have enough that I can start building and putting things together. So this video is just going to be a basically an overview of some of the parts that I have and kind of to let you guys know what I'm doing. Um, and I want to let you know that I do have. Part of this design done in Google SketchUp, so you can check it out there. Um, it's under, if you type in under uh, Google SketchUp under HHO for Life, there's going to be one design that pops up under that, so you can check that out um, if you'd like and uh, kind of know a little bit of what I'm doing. I tried to build it pretty decent in there, so, but uh, anyway, <clears throat> sorry I'm sitting down, this room's too small, I can't stand up and record at the same time, so. Um, I uh, kind of want to go over a couple things. One is I'm doing testing on a bubbler type design and I'm also doing testing on a heat design. Um, the main design that I'm going to be testing on is the heat design though because from the testing I've done previously, the uh, design where you bubble air through the gas to create a vapor doesn't work very well because the vapor is too dense. Um, so I'm going to be doing the testing with the hot vapor because it proves a lot better results. Um, so, pretty excited about this guy. I hope you guys are too. Let me uh, take this camera off here. And, sorry, I got to spin you in a circle. So, I don't have a quick release on this yet. But, uh, kind of go over what I have. Alright. This is most of the stuff that I'm going to be using to build the vaporizer. Not all of it, but most of it. And there's a piece of test equipment that I'm going to be using as well. And I'll go through this a little bit. Alright. This right here is a piece of silicone gasket material. That's going to be used to seal the lid on the top of the vaporizer. Oh, let me see if I can kind of do this in a more of an orderly fashion. Um, these right here are the plates that I'm going to be using. Um, and this is the rectangular tubing. These plates are going to go on the top and bottom of these, this piece of tubing. And how this tubing is going to work is one, the smaller piece is going to go inside of the bigger piece. So basically, what I'm going to do is weld this piece of flat steel right there onto this tubing. I'm going to draw out the inner, inner diameter of this piece of tubing on here. Then I'm going to cut it out so that it becomes, and then I'm going to weld it on here so that it, be, that it becomes a, a flange. Once I have that flange welded on, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get this bigger piece of rectangular tubing and I'm going to slide it over this and weld it to that same flange. Then there's going to be about three quarters of an inch sticking out on the side of this. Let me show you. Okay, so you see that lip, how it's sticking out? Basically what it's going to do, and this is going to be the lid and it's going to seal it. So, let me kind of give you a demonstration of that real quick, kind of how it would look. Sorry, so that one piece would go in there, then I'd throw this piece down here. Obviously it would all be welded together. Set this one in here. This right here um, would actually be level with this piece right here. It's not going to be recessed down like that. Um, so that there's an air gap around the whole container other than the top. And then these, this piece right here um, is going to be cut out to the inner diameter of the smaller tube so that it creates a flange and connects the two pieces of tubing together. And this right here is going to go on top 
I'm going to, well, actually, next it would be this piece of gasket, cut out obviously to size, and, and this would go on top. And I'll have holes drilled all the way around this container so that I can put some bolts through and tighten it up. Okay, then, once that's there, what I'll have is this piece of 3-inch black pipe that's threaded. I'm going to be cutting this down and putting two of them on here. Basically, I'm going to cut it right here, right where the threads end, and then also right here where the threads end. I'm going to have one piece right here, and then the other piece over here. One's for the vapor inlet, and the other is for the vapor outlet. On the vapor inlet, what I'm going to have is this piece of... This is also a piece of 3-inch. Um, it's not pipe tubing, though. It's just regular 3-inch still tubing. Um, so it's smaller than the actual pipe. But it makes it perfect, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a groove all the way around on this tube right here. A couple of them. And then I'm going to place some big O-rings around them so that I can slide it inside of the inlet on the 3-inch, the other 3-inch tube, and it'll create a seal with those O-rings. What that will allow me to do is adjust this pipe right here, which is going to go down into the container. It'll actually be down in the container. I can adjust it up and down so that I can do testing by bubbling um, air through the gasoline, and then I can lift it up to do testing using nothing but heat. I'm going to try doing a bubble, a bubbler design um, where I do it cold and have a good filtration system on it. I'm going to use a bubbler design while the gas is hot, and then I'm going to use just um, air blowing across the top of the gas, not bubbling through the gas to capture the hot vapors and bring them into my air intake and into my engine. Um, so that's kind of the three methods of testing that I'm going to be doing. Okay, next, there's this stuff right here. These are for my 2-inch exhaust line. And I'm going to be welding them right here under the side. Uh, we'll have an inlet and an outlet. I'm actually going to have one of these welded down at the bottom underneath. Because um, I have to build supports for this for the bottom right here because where the air filter sits on, in my well well um, there's a rise in the middle so I have to build some legs to rise it up anyway and I'm going to use one of those legs as a, a, a exhaust inlet and then I'm going to actually weld one of these up higher so that it circulates through the container before it, the exhaust exits um, or it would be like putting one right here on this side and putting <clears throat> the other one on this side up at the top <clears throat> but I can't do it like that so because it just won't work in my vehicle like that I may be able to put one here on the this side and then one on the other side at the top we'll just have to see how much room I have when it comes down to doing that okay now for the inside of the of the uh, vaporizer what I'm gonna have is I don't have this piece of tubing yet, but I'm getting a piece of inch and a half um, tubing and I'm going to be drilling a hole through this outer tube um, and connect it to the inner tube, the inner piece of rectangular tubing. And then I'm going to drill a hole through that so that I can put my float valve in there. Now you're looking at it that way, whoa, that's not going to fit, but it actually... Uh, it ends up fitting perfectly in there. I uh, I measured it up and tried it. So I uh, I'm in the process of trying to find a uh, a smaller float valve like this that's made out of stainless steel um, just for heat purposes. But I haven't been able to find that yet. If any anybody knows where I can get one that's small like this one, um, please let me know. This one is about six inches long from this gasket right here to the end of the uh, um, float. 
So that's going to go down in my container first, and then what I'm going to have is I'm going to have some little teeny legs that stick out inside the container um, that I can mount this piece of perforated metal to. I don't know if you guys can see it, but see it's got all the small fine holes. I, uh, I got it with as small as holes as I could find um, <clears throat> just to make it so that it acts as a good splash guard. Once I have one of the pieces of perforated steel down, obviously cut to size so it'll fit in the container perfectly. Um, I'm gonna. I have this stainless steel um, wool here, and this can withstand constant temperatures of 700 degrees Celsius, um, which is about. It's in the thousand range for Fahrenheit, um, but I have some medium medium grade and then I have some fine grade I'm just gonna have to see which one works best um, so to filter out the uh, the gas and prevent it from splashing and being sucked up through and from the liquid from, uh, prevent the liquid from being sucked up through into my engine because I only want vapor I don't want any liquid um, all right next what we're gonna have is this piece of flex line. This is going to connect the vaporizer to the air inlet. I also am going to be getting some um, insulation wrap so that once this is installed I can wrap some of that insulation around it to, to hold the heat in as much as I can. Um, so that's going to connect. I'm not gonna have it threaded on the one side actually because this needs to slip over it so gonna slip onto there and then onto my uh, air intake, the butterfly of the air intake. Um, now, oh and after, and then on the air inlet portion of the vaporizer I'm going to have this uh, air filter attached. Okay, on the exhaust line I actually have a, I, I forgot to bring it out, but I have a piece of two inch um, flexible exhaust line that I'm going to use to tie into my exhaust coming from my engine, my exhaust pipe coming from my engine. Um, it's pretty dang flexible stuff so I got it like that so that I can um, bend it because I'll need to be making some pretty good turns and stuff since it's not routed for that. Um, my, my engine's not made so I can put exhaust line through like that and then I'll probably wrap the uh, exhaust line with some um, insulating, some exhaust insulating tape. Sorry, um, to keep that heat in. All right, and uh, I have these clamps right here for the exhaust. That's not the right size. I gotta go and get a the uh, the uh, two inch because I was originally gonna do it an inch and a half, but I decided that two inch would be better because I didn't want to reduce my exhaust line down. Um, basically, another part that I'm missing is I'm going to have two T's that connect to my exhaust line, and then uh, in B. Well, I'm actually going to have two elbows. Um, I was thinking about T's, but I decided to go with elbows. So I'm going to tie in with an elbow, reroute the exhaust so that it flows through my um, the vaporizer. And right at the vaporizer or wherever I can, I have this. You're probably wondering what the heck that is. Two inch solenoid valve, diaphragm type. Um, what I'm going to have connected to this to control the temperature inside the vaporizer is a thermostat. I have a, a thermostat that has a, a range of 0 to 999 degrees Fahrenheit. So I can control the temperature within this container. Um, up to 999 degrees and set it where I want so that it will maintain that same that temperature in the vaporizer at all times. So 